If you're either a software developer and you're interested in improving your software development lifecycle via beach flagging, or you're a product owner looking how to maximize growth within your KPIs, then Optimizely Feature Experimentation is a tool that you'll probably want to check out. Now, Optimizely Feature Experimentation combines feature flagging and server-side experimentation into a single bit of code that can be updated easily from within a UI. Now, feature experimentation was launched in 2016 and it has constantly improved year after year. However, in the last year, there have been five features that I've been particularly excited about. So, if you have any interest in feature experimentation, then I'm pretty confident you'll want to know about all of these changes, so stick around to learn more about them. Round one. The simplest way for me to explain this first feature is to show you via the UI. Now, I'm in the V1 version of feature experimentation that used to be called Full Stack. Now, on this screen, you can see that we have two tabs, one which says experiments, one which says features. Now, splitting flags and experiments into different containers was not ideal because it doubled the amount of work that the software team had to do. So picture it, when you're thinking about releasing a feature, you create feature flags. Now, after you launch that feature, you want to create an experiment, so then you have to go back into your code base and write more code. However, the good news is that this architecture has now been changed. We're now inside the V2 latest interface, and you can see that the experiments and the features tab have been combined into a single flag tab. Now, what Optimizely has done in the last two years is rewritten every single one of their SDKs to work with this new architecture. And as mentioned, the benefit of this is writing a single bit of code that will give you much more options on how you want to release it and do experimentation with it. Now, at first glance, it's probably easy to overlook the importance of this change. However, it has two really important factors that's going to save your developers a bunch of time. First, only having to write one bit of code to be able to do feature flags and experiments is going to mean setup is quicker. Now, one single test isn't probably going to be that much of a time saver. However, if you're creating 2000 flags, then this is going to add up over time. Now, the second one is around technical debt. Only having one bit of code means your code base is going to be smaller and it's going to be much easier to maintain. Now, when you want to delete a feature flag in the future, only having to remove one area of code means there's less likely of bugs being introduced. It's also going to be quicker to clean up your code afterwards. Round two. The next new feature that you need to know about will allow you to run multiple experiments on the same flag at the same time. Now, I'm in the V2 interface. You can see that we've just got flags here and I've created a feature flag. So now when I click on this flag, you can see in the middle here, we've got the ability to define rules. And I've created three different rules. So what we can do first is define a targeted delivery, an AB test or multi arm bandit test. So I've created a test that if VIP users are added into this experiment, they're going to see either offer one or offer two, and we're going to do an experiment on them. So the way that these rules work is sequentially. So if someone gets classed as a VIP user, they'll be added into this experiment. If they're not a VIP user, then this second rule is going to be evaluated. Now in this second rule, I'm doing a test and it's going to be on iOS users and Android users. And again, we're going to do the same test. If they're in variation one, you get offer one, otherwise show them offer two. Now, if someone doesn't match as a VIP user or a mobile user, however, they are a normal member, we're going to show them the feature delivered on. However, we're not going to perform a test on it. And then for anyone else, we're then going to disable the feature and they're not going to see it. Now, the really useful thing about this architecture is that you can prioritize the order in which this is run. So by grabbing my mobile user test here, I can put it above the VIP one. Now what's happening is that if you're a mobile user, you're going to be added into this experiment. If not, then you're going to be evaluated for the VIP test and so on and so on. And within Optimizely, it's possible for you to create as many different experiments as you want and to prioritize them. And as far as I'm aware, this capability is very unique to Optimizely and no other feature flagging tool in the marketplace at the moment can do it. So if you want to have a lot more control over how your features are released and how you run tests on them, then this is really useful. Round.
three. The next feature I want to talk about is a feature that I think has been sadly missing from Optimizely feature experimentation for too long, and that is scheduling. Now we can access the scheduler from this schedule changes tab right here. Now in a previous version of Optimizely, if you wanted to turn on a feature or turn it off, you'd have to log into the UI at say six o'clock in the morning to do this. However, this is now changed with the scheduler. So creating a schedule, really simple, click on the button here, and then we can give it a date. We can give it a time. Then we can pick our time zone and define which environment do we want to deploy to. So, production, development, I'm going to pick production. Now we can pick which flag we want to deploy. We can say if we want to either turn it on or off, and then we can save our change. Off we go. No more logging in to turn things on and off. This is a game changer in my opinion. Round four. The next feature I want to talk about is a productivity hack and it eliminates a massive bugbear that I used to encounter when I had to use this tool in production in the real world. Now, the good thing about Optimizely is you can run unlimited experiments. However, let's say you've got 10 experiments running at the same time, you'd have to log in each week to check if any of your experiments had hit statistical significance, and this basically just wasted a bunch of time. Now we have notifications. So if we go to our account settings, when we go to the profile tab right here, on profile, you can see we've got notifications. Clicking on notifications is going to list all the projects that you have access to in your account. And then you can just tick the project you're interested in. And now you're going to get an email whenever one of your experiments is getting close to statistical significance. Now, just in terms of productivity, this is going to mean you don't have to log into the Optimizely UI just to check on progress. You can rely on your emails and come in when you get that notification. And for me, this is an amazing feature. Final round. The final new feature experimentation 2023 feature that I want to tell you about is around improved personalization and targeting. And this can be found within the audiences tab. Now, before this new feature was released, it was possible to do personalization and targeting within feature experimentation. What would happen in the old way of doing things, which still works now, is that the developer at a code level would pass all the data into Optimizely for editors to be able to target. In the new world, you can see that we have this new recipe, which is called the Optimizely Data Platform Audience Targeting. And from within here, you can see that we have these two different segments, custom segments and pre-built segments. Now, the interesting new thing around these segments is that after I drag it over here, you can see that there's a drop down and this drop down is populated with a bunch of personalization groups and the groups within here are coming from an external CDP. Now, in this example, that CDP is Optimizely CDP called Optimizely Data Platform. However, Optimizely also has a bunch of connectors that work with MParticle, Zeotap, Helium, Segment, Google, just to name a few. Being able to import personalization groups from other tools is really handy. However, it doesn't stop there. Now, this integration makes use of Optimizely's real-time integration API. This means that when you hook up these things, they can work in real time if you need to. So this means you can update things in your CDP and get them targeted in your code within a few seconds. So if this is the first time that you're looking at feature experimentation for a few years, I think we can agree that that's an impressive amount of features for such a short amount of time. Now, personally, I think there's some things which can allow you a lot more capability when it comes to feature flagging experimentation, and I recommend that you check it out. Now, we've got to that stage in the video that if you do like all things Optimizely and you haven't already, smash on the subscribe button. I release a video every single Sunday that will help you become a better developer and more informed around the programming world in general. So click subscribe. Also, if you have found value, click on the like button. Now, if you want to learn more about Optimizely feature flagging and experimentation, then I've created a video which will walk you through how to set everything up using this new V2 interface. That link is on the screen right now, so click on that. Otherwise, I hope you're having an amazing time wherever you are in this beautiful world. And until next Sunday, happy coding.